we have a very important definition here. This is the definition of the radian. We've seen this before, but we're going to repeat it. And you really need to understand what a radian is. Because uh, within the next week, we're going to be getting into rotational motion and uh, lots of things that require that you really understand what radians are if you're going to understand the subject matter. So we have a circle here, radius r. An angle of one radian is an angle such that the arc of this circle here is equal to the radius. The arc has distance r. If you walked along this arc, you would walk a distance r. Same as the radius. So we call that a radian. Now we observe that since the radius occurs 2 pi times as you go around the circumference, all the way around the circle, the angle around the circle had better be 2 pi radians. Since we have the, uh, uh, the circumference, we have the radius 2 pi times. That is, we're going to be able to do this once, twice, three, four, five, six times, and a little bit left over. Remember, 2 pi is about 6.28. Uh, the circumference of this thing is 2 pi, or 6.28 times the radius, so the radius arc will fit into the circle 2 pi times. That means that the angle around the circle has to be 2 pi radians, and you really need to understand that thoroughly. Now there are two pictures that you need to also understand so thoroughly that you can produce either picture in 30 seconds or less. Okay, The picture is a picture of a circle divided into eight equal angles all the way around. And we're going to label these angles in radians. Now if we think about it, the distance around the circle in radians, or the angle around the circle in radians, is 2 pi. We have 2 pi radians as we go around the circle. If we divide it into 8 equal parts, we divide it into angles of 2 pi divided by 8 radians, 2 pi over 8 radians, and of course that's going to reduce to pi over 4 radians. So this is our basic angle. We're going by pi over 4 radians. We'll add another pi over 4 and another and another and so on around the circle until we get all the way around. Now, we can then easily label the angles. Uh, this angle is going to be, if this angle is pi over 4, then this is going to be twice as much or 2 pi over 4. Don't worry about the fact that we can reduce the fraction. Let's just write down 2 pi over 4. And then we just go around the circle writing 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4. Then we can go through and reduce the ones that will reduce. Every other one reduces. 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. 4 pi over 4 is just pi. 6 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 2. The 3 pi over 4, the 5 pi over 4, and the 7 pi over 4, and of course the original pi over 4, don't reduce. That's a very simple picture that shows you what the angles are, and you really need to understand that picture to be able to work with radians. Now here's another picture where we've done the same thing, but this time we've divided the circle into 12 parts each corresponding, of course, to 30 degrees, as the pi over 4 a minute ago corresponded to 45 degrees. Okay, because 1 12th of a 360 degree arc is, of course, 30 degrees. 1 12th of a pi over 2 arc is 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6 radians. Incidentally, notice we don't write units on these. If you don't write a unit on an angle, that automatically means that the angle is in radians. If there's no unit, the angle's in radians. That's the default unit for angles, not degrees, radians. And that means, of course, that you want to have your calculator in radian mode if you're going to be dealing with uh, radian measures. Okay, in any case, we go around the circle in, 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 in increments of, uh, in angular increments of pi over 6, 1 12th of a circle. And we do the same thing we did before. We've got pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, all the way around here until we get up to 12 pi over 6. You write that down brainlessly. Then you can use your brain a little bit and reduce the fractions. If you do a lot of this, of course, you get used to what the fractions are, but you need the picture because it's real easy to get confused. You know, 5 pi over 3 is not an intuitive number. It doesn't make any sense unless we can relate it to a picture like this. 
Of course, we can approximate it. It's a little more than 15 over 3, a little more than 5, but uh, that doesn't tell us much. Okay? So we really need to understand the picture to understand what a lot of these radian measures are telling us.